Right. Uh, as, as Hector Sant said this afternoon, and I agree with him, a lot of the um, problems of financial instability and capitalism throughout the world can only be solved by international coordination and collaboration between nations. Otherwise, we get picked off individually by a, a regulatory arbitrage there, I got it out, uh, from the uh, plutocrats. And the first step is simply abolishing, eliminating tax havens. There's a load of bottom-up stuff, there's a load of top-down stuff that you can do, and we need a bottom-up welling up of that awareness from people like the people here and all the other people that they know. You're only six social relations from everybody else on the planet. And then it will get through to the politicians and we'll also get some top-down movement. And I've got another 38 suggestions here, but it's probably somebody else's Okay, hey, that's pretty good. Pretty good for starters. George, we're going to give George another chance to speak. Another round of applause for George. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so YouGov did a poll recently and um, they asked, should the top 10% of people pay 20% more tax to pay off the entire deficit? 74% um, of people said, yay, great idea. So progressive taxation is one of the things that is not on the agenda really at all. You know, not for the government, not for the opposition. And that should get us asking very serious questions about the information politics that governs the world. Why is it not on the agenda? Uh, because 90% um, of media is paid for by corporate advertising and you have increasingly concentrated media ownership arrangements with increasingly streamlined commercial arrangements, which means that they, they put less and less money and less and less freedom for their news arms. So things that are absolutely obvious and rational simply don't get into the public debate. Um, so that's a very important point, but I've probably got limited time. Um, <laughs> One more um, idea. Okay, so green, the, the big thing is the Green New Deal. So um, in the 1930s, after, after the Depression, it was understood that there was a very systematic problem, and it wasn't about one, you know, a few things that you could change here and there. The system had, had effectively ground to a halt. And what we have is roughly the same now. So the idea of a new deal, a, a, a new package of, of regulations that actually answers the disease and not just the symptoms is very important and the word green before that is incredibly important also because okay. we quite simply have yeah um th th this is this is really, really important. we got it um, yeah. the vast majority of our economic activities have in many cases very very bad ecological consequences yeah. if we don't have climate justice very quickly which means retrofitting the entire global economy um, transforming our whole economy to one that is actually based on our ecology, which, by the way, would give us the massive, um, the, the, the massive government investment that we saw in the Second World War, which is actually what got us out of the Depression, not the piecemeal measures in the 30s. Okay, so, great stuff. Okay, this lady here has waited for such a long time, and then this guy here. Um, first of all, I'd say I'm really glad in this country we do have a progressive tax system in the sense that we've kept the 50p tax. Yes, let's make sure that that stays, because we need to make sure that rich people are taxed properly. Um, second of all, um, I would say as a solution, we want to see more companies owned by the people who work there, like John Lewis. Great model. Brilliant. Second of all, I'd say the government is doing stuff to close down tax havens. We're working with Switzerland. We've got a great deal with them and Liechtenstein. So I think, yes, get rid of tax havens. They're ridiculous. I'd say it's not true that 60% of politicians are millionaires. I don't know where you got that, that comment from, but I don't think that's true. I know that a lot of politicians are from rough areas, from normal families. They want to make a difference. But at the same time, you want good schools, hospitals. Banks pay £54 billion pounds of tax. That's what pays for hospitals and schools. We need to look at other ways. The problem with slowing growth is it means that there's less money to pay for our public services that are so important for poor people. So we need to look at right, how, because we do actually need growth. This is the annoying thing. But how do we get it in a way that is ethical? Um, that's what we need to deal with. And that, on, annoyingly, in this country, we're dependent on banking to fund our schools, hospitals, welfare system. Yeah, and our, and our arms and our alcohol exports. I'm sorry, this, this country it is shameful. We need to look at ways that we can make money ethically. Come, like, let's look at manufacturing, let's look at making stuff. It, but, but it's such a massive task. And I know MPs who long to see this change. But it's such a big task because on the one hand, you've got people occupying yeah. Wall Street. But on the other hand, you've got people anti-cuts. Well, what, what do we want? Do we want to see the, you know, do you want to see the, the system change with them or make less money? But then there'll have to be cuts because you make less money. Okay, that's great. 
Are we coming out and there and there and there and there and everywhere? Just, yeah, just no a, wants to say something. Just a quick right. response to that. It's, it's a quick response to that. I, I agree with a lot. A lot of the proposals have been said. I think there is an important thing to put to bed, though, which is about the often the city of London as a kind of conglomerate all the banks has talked about is the goose which lays the golden egg and the, the argument from Brown and Blair right through the current um, government was that you know if we regulate the banks and if we bring limits then the goose will that lays the golden egg will lose the tax revenues um, well the, you know the goose has fouled the nest and it's made it toxic for everyone else to live in and the part of the issue is credit I think is a good and I, I'm a believer in markets uh, but the point is we don't have a free market. What often it happens at the moment, it's much more profitable for a bank to bet in the, in, the, in the global casino international system than it is to invest in widget makers in Walthamstow. Um, and because you don't get, you get a very low rate of return. And so part of the need to actually bring limits and, 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 and embed capital is to tie it to places so that actually can, people can get access to credit uh, and can actually start generating the growth you want. And we won't get that unless there's a, a re-embedding of capital through various forms of limits. And one very, very practical solution, it cannot be right that the poorest people in this country are being screwed the most by exorbitant interest rates. Uh, in this, uh, as they, uh, unlike any other European country, Italy, France, Germany, Poland, all have a basic cap on interest. They're 0.5% base rate, no one is going to get poor on 25% plus interest rates. So one very practical solution I would suggest is a cap on interest rates. Uh, okay. Okay. They, they John, are not capped at the of, moment. A couple of comments from John really quickly though. John, how, do, how, 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 do we, how do we yeah. finance the growth, the projects, the public investment that we require? Not through the private finance initiative, one of the biggest rip-offs ever imposed upon this country. <laughs> Abolish the private finance initiative which has been a banking rip-off. Fund it through local authority bonds. That's the way to fund the, the new green, green New Deal initiative, which is a terrific initiative. I totally agree with you, George. Secondly, contrary to Luke, I'm in favour of a financial transaction tax, which would dampen the, spec the harmless, sorry, harmful and useless activities of the City of London on the speculative side. So a financial transaction tax, not to raise money, but to, to curb the speculative trades. Um, greater transparency right the way across the market. Require all companies to disclose through the international financial reporting standard on country by country reporting. Disclose who they are, where they are, what profits they are making, what taxes they are paying. The gentleman over there is absolutely right. More disclosure, more contributions to society. But the way in which we do it is organized through democracy and it's called tax. That's the way in which companies should contribute to the, the countries where they operate. And when they avoid tax, they are clearly engaged in non-ethical activities. Great. So, Ken, okay. my key no. message to you is please tackle the tax avoidance. Okay, right. this guy here. Okay, thanks, John. Hello. If you've got a point to make, stick your hand up because the mics are coming round, but we're running right out of time. Hi there, my name is Eddie Stroud from East London, a place called Tower Hamlets. Um, got lots of different comments I could make about the different discussions that have been going on, but I'm going to focus so much on a practical one because Steve seems to like that, like the guy over here. Um, and it seems quite obvious, but it hasn't been talked about that much, but I actually run a social enterprise called City Gateway, and we turn over 4 million. We make about 10 or 15% profit or surplus, whatever you want to call it, and that gets reinvested back into the social enterprise. The out output of the social enterprise isn't, just a, isn't about making wealth for individuals. It isn't about making money for individuals. I'm not saying we shouldn't have that at all. There's another whole discussion there, I suppose. But if we, we can't just have that in society. Um, and what we've got here is a model which is business, and um, which is you know, trading products and selling products, but then products that we, a lot of focus goes into making sure that the products that we sell are good for society, the things that you know, are, are positive for our local communities, and that as we make money gets reinvested back into, again, the, the, the social enterprise and what the aims of the social enterprise are. And, and a big part of that is job creation, which is crucial at this time. We need to have enterprises that are growing and developing so we can create jobs for the millions of young people that are out of, out of a job. And there's ways of doing that. There's ways of having enterprise, social enterprise you can call it, and obviously there's different types of that, where you can create the jobs, you can create the wealth for lots of individuals. We particularly have created 120 people employed in our um, actual social enterprise. Most are coming from very poor backgrounds and we provide lots of training, education, employment for our local community as well, with working with thousands of people every year. So for me, a practical thing would be how do we invest in and focus on developing and growing more social enterprises across our country and across the world. Great, thank you. Okay, real quick, 
Thank you. Oh, Owen Brawley, like all, like all practical men, I am a slave to a long dead economist. And the uh, long dead economist, in my case, is Hilaire Belloc and distributism. Uh, the problem with capitalism is, as I mentioned, is power is concentrated. So if you take the power away and put it in the hands of a regulator, where do you think the cycles are going to end up working the next time in the regulator? Therefore, distributism is the answer to this problem, and uh, which means that, as has been mentioned, everyone is a shareholder in the operation in which they work. Everyone has a say in local politics. Power is distributed, and you keep the cycles out of business. And there's a Spanish corporation called Mondragon. And uh, finally, okay. debt-based money is important. Land value tax is important. And if you want to know something, something practical, the next time somebody comes looking for your vote, local councillor, MP, MEP, or no doubt the global government, because democracy is great, ask them what do you know about land value tax and debt-based money. When they look at you blankly, there is nothing they can do for you. If there isn't a candidate who understands it, be the candidate. Hey, okay, let's go here. Keep your if you keep your hands up, we want to get people in who've not had a chance to speak. So keep your hands up, especially if you've not had a chance to speak, and we get a mic to you in these last few minutes. Hi there, I'm Gilbert from Hackney. Uh, it's very obvious to me that there's a desperate need to introduce a new political language uh, that talks about the reconfiguration of power. Um, the current system that manufactures inequality needs to be replaced. Um, practical considerations, money, remove money from the political system for starters, uh, change the way bankers get paid, um, stop funding illegitimate and morally bankrupt wars, um, end, <laughs> end the, 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 the state of rampant consumerism within finite resources. That has to end. That has to, it's got to stop. Um, and lastly, I would just say we have to adapt our lives to the twin challenges of peak oil and climate change. It's absolutely critical we adapt our lives to, to those changes. Thank you. Okay, thanks. This lady down here, where's Rocky? There she is. Oh, oh sorry. Hi. Um, just a question for Occupy, really. Occupy, I mean, will you eventually then be a party that we can vote for? Uh, or, or, you know, just is it, a, you know, a, a lot of, I mean, I personally don't vote anymore. It's just not worth it. And, I, you know, people that I talk to <laughs> in Occupy... So he wants to know whether Can I say something? I think that's really, really interesting because it's something for me yeah. that I found... For me, it's, it's, it's like voting is like, you, you, you know, you must vote is the way I sort of feel because I grew up in a country where there were 48 million people and only 6 million had the right to vote. I mean, that's not democracy in any shape or form, right? And so I've always had the strong feeling that women died in the last 100 years for the right to vote. I'm female. And, and I found such voter apathy in England. And, in, and for ages, I just didn't get it. And now I get it. I mean, who do you vote for? There's no one here that I trust. There should be a box that says, you know, nobody on this ballot or in this parliament or in this future can possibly be someone oh, so I Tanya, trust. Tanya, okay, Tanya, so to answer Occupy, the question, then. to answer yeah. the question, Occupy is an idea. It's a place where you can discuss alternatives. It is not at this point in time, I don't know where it's going to go, but it is not a political party because as soon as you make it a political party, you actually isolate and exclude people out of it. And that's not what it's about. It's about being able to have what we're doing right now, where everybody has a voice to have a, a participation okay. in a discussion. Tanya, and that is I what Occupy you, facilitates. Can I ask you a question? Is it easier to be in opposition than power? I mean, is it easier for us all to sit there and complain rather than actually take the reins? Uh, do you know what? 